Welcome to another episode of GUI Challenges, where I build interfaces my way, and then I challenge you to do it your way. Because with our creative minds combined, we're going to find multiple ways to solve these interfaces and expand the diversity of our skills. And today, we're building something much more lighthearted than normal. Today is an illusion. Do you see slants here? You should, even though there are none. This illusion is called the cafe wall illusion. And I have to chuckle to myself because I'm sure that some artisan showed up to a cafe, was hired to create a nice wall pattern, and they sat down and they used all their tools and were very precise and laid everything out. And then their client shows up and tilts their head a little bit and looks at it like, mm, are you sure everything is straight? And the artisan is like, yes, yes, yes. I am very sure it is uh, as straight as I've ever made anything. And everyone is looking at it like, Who's going to tell the artisan that it's not straight? And they're all like, I don't know. This has got to be a scenario that was really funny. Um, and everyone just had to like go double check themselves. And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to rebuild this today just to make sure that it is, in fact, not slanted. Because it sort of looks less slanted the more you look at it. But if you glance at it, it is definitely slanted looking. So it's like a fun illusion. Plus, look at it. It's a grid. It's rows and columns. Look, that's even what I used today. So I used grid to solve this. And I, I'm thinking someone out there is going to use Flexbox. You could probably use gradients. There's you know floats, all sorts of cool ways to complete this task. Um, and I just saw it as a grid. It's like a grid challenge. Plus, it's like illusions. I really like building illusions. They're kind of fun and playful. So today, we're building a little bit more of a lighthearted uh, grid. And we're going to do it live inside of uh, CodePen here in a second. But I did want to show some kind of cool things with DevTools here. So like I used Justify Content to do the offsets. Like to me, this first row looked like it was Justify Content Start. See how it's kind of stuck to the left. This one's in the center, equal uh, on both sides. And then this one's on the end. So if I pop in here and I just say like display grid, it was already display grid. You can see it down here. But this gives me this little handy swatch. And now when I click these buttons, it's only going to affect this one little style area. And we can see it go between center left or start and right and end. And that's how I was sort of visualizing this grid. And I, I mean, maybe you're visualizing it similarly or totally different. And I think that's what's really fun. It's also fun to come in here and like, here, let's look at the auto columns and kind of pull these up and look at how my illusion starts to break depending on the size of these items. So the illusion is kind of a little picky um, in some fun ways, I thought. Um, and so once you execute it properly, you'll see the crooked lines. And if you're doing anything a little off, it's not as effective, almost like on mobile. Like if we see this on mobile, switch to responsive mode. Sure, Pixel 5, don't care. See how it's not quite as effective. I'll take off all of our kind of grid overlays too. It kind of looks slanted, but definitely not as much as it did when we're here, right? As soon as that pops up, you're like, mm, it's crooked. And then you're like, oh, let me stare longer. Oh, I guess it's straight. And <laughs> anyway, I'm very amused. Obviously, I'm amused in multiple ways by this. Hopefully, you think it's funny too. Let's pivot though and switch over to CodePen. I have this GUI Challenges Crooked Lines Illusion Starter for us to fork. I'm gonna go ahead and fork it here in a second, but notice it's just got our HTML set up for us. So we have five rows and each row has five boxes. That's how I set it up and you can use this starter if you want. And then here's our styles. Um, but you can, again, you know, do this however it is that you want to. I left like the white squares are blank. Those aren't actual elements. Like here, we'll twirl this open. We can see that the only elements in there are the black squares. So a row has a background of white. The grid has a background of gray with some gap. We do have some borders on our elements to kind of match that. Anyway, we'll get there. Let's, let's just go build it. So here's the setup. I'm going to hit fork and let's get started. First, a little bit of house cleaning. We don't really need to see the HTML much. So I'm going to pull it up there. I'm going to hit some nice returns here just to get these prepped and ready and then i'm going to just right off the bat set some backgrounds we're not going to see anything yet but here's background black our row is background white and then our body is background gray background background uh gray okay so let's start with body though we'll do display grid excellent and grid auto rows because what we want to do is set five rows that are approximately like well, here, let's say 20 VH. We want 100 divided by 5 is 20, so each of them are that size. Let's set margin to 0 so that we don't see those edges. All right, we've got a little bit of gap we need also. And I decided 4 pixels was nice for this illusion. So here's our grid auto rows um, with our gap. But I think we have a scroll bar. We have a little bit of a scroll bar. And to get rid of that, we're going to calc on here 20 VH minus 4 pixels, minus that gap. 
And now there we go, no scroll bar. That's nice. I'll pull that out so we don't have any line uh, wraps. And there is what I did on the body, right? Okay, that seems like it makes a bunch of sense. Let's check out the row. So here I'm going to set display grid. And I'm going to change the direction of the grid, uh, which it normally flows as rows. So I'm going to set them to columns. And that means um, each particular child is going to get set up on the way there. So grid auto flow column. Now we need to give each column a size. And so we're going to say grid auto columns. So we set the flow direction. And now we're going to set the automatic size of each column. And I'm going to set 9VW. OK, so now we have a bunch of boxes here. Let's add a gap so that we can see some space between them. 10VW sounds right. Excellent. OK, and then one of my little secret sauces in here was to do padding inline of 4VW. OK, so now we're a little offset from the edges. We can rely on that justify content trick that I was showing earlier. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Um, and nth child even. So this is every even items is like two, four, six, eight, stuff like that. They're going to be justify content in the center. And we're using nesting here. So we say nth child three. And so every third item, we're going to set justify content to end. And look at that. That's almost our, our illusion. But you can see that the illusion isn't quite completed. And the way to complete the illusion is to come in here to the square. And we're going to give a border in line of four pixels of solid gray. And now the gap will match the border and the border will sort of complete the illusion. So this is how I built this illusion today. Um, there's I know there are so many more ways to do it. Um, and it's I don't know, it was really exciting. And maybe maybe I don't know if you really do. But let's see this in the debugging corner because it's um, a little much to look at, but it's still fun. So here, let me scroll over to the debugging corner. So here you can see the illusion on each of our different screens. I think it's most dramatic on the iPad for some reason. I, I don't know why. It's also pretty dramatic here. Anywhere where it, it gets larger, it seems to be more slanted. It's like it's the lines travel along horizontally. They just because right like these don't look as crooked. They still feel off, um, but it's not the same as these. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this illusion today. This GUI challenge was much more lighthearted. I hope you feel more invited to join this one. The last one was just so complex. The carousel, oh, I mean, I felt intimidated even getting started there. So hopefully this one looks much more approachable. I'm looking forward to your submissions. Watch out for the blog post, and I'll see you all in the next GUI challenge. Thanks, y'all.